business. Ms. Can I Brand just add, because I may not have understood your uh, question properly, that um, beyond the demographic information that is often used um, uh, in advertising um, to target it to certain markets, increasingly we're seeing more sensitive kinds of information used, health information and other information, um, to do exactly what we've heard described to, to personalize um, the advertising. Um, and there are great concerns about that. There may be some people who are not troubled by that, but we know that there are a lot of other people who are, and that those people need an easy to use tool to prevent that kind of information from being collected if they don't wish it to be. Mr. Chairman, may I comment? The, uh, the purpose of advertisers is to collect information concerning the capabilities and intentions of the potential buyer and to affect that buyer's behavior. Oddly enough, those three points, collection of information about capabilities and intentions for the purpose of affecting behavior is also the definition of what intelligence services do. There is in fact no practicable distinction between the public activity we call collecting intelligence and the private activity we call targeting advertising. They are both spying. The purpose of spying has got to be one which the public would find in its advantage and not merely in the advantage of the institution performing the spying. We do that with respect to public intelligence services because they're under democratic control. We don't do that with respect to advertisers. They are under nobody's control but their own unless they are regulated. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you also for allowing me the opportunity to share this this uh, hearing. The seat is much more comfortable than I imagined. Uh, <laughs> um, Chair recognizes uh, Ranking Member Whitfield from Kentucky. Um, Mr. Castro, you, you just heard Dr. <clears throat> Moglin's uh, comment about advertising, and I was just curious, would you have any comment to what he, he just said? Sure, absolutely. I mean, I think it's um, actually inaccurate. Uh, spying is very different. Spying, you know what somebody is doing very specifically. It's identifiable. Um, it's implied that it's harmful. Um, in, in this case, what's happening for most of targeted advertising, most of the collection and use of information online, um, and, you know, when we're talking about this problem, uh, you know, 95 percent of everything that we talk about are, is, you know, things that most people are comfortable with. It's this kind of 5% gray area that's the exception. Um, but, you know, overall, there's a lot of good things that are being done with this data and good things that are helpful to consumers. Uh, you know, data is collected and used so that websites are, are more accessible, more usable. They're displaying more accurate information. Uh, information is collected so that uh, search engine rankings can be improved. Uh, data is collected, uh, you know, of course, to, um, to do targeted advertising. Um, and all of these things help users. I don't think uh, most consumers would consider that they're spied on when they're given something that they want. Would you like to respond to that anyway, Ms. Moglin? Well, it seems to me that uh, it heightens again the point that thinking about target of adver targeted advertising in isolation is probably not a good idea. But if Mr. Castro is correct, we could test it with a very simple regulatory approach, which would simply require businesses to disclose to consumers on request everything the business knows about them and what they've done with it. Then we will find out whether people are comfortable with what actually happens as opposed to what they can see. Online advertising firms are very secretive in their nature. I don't compare them lightly to intelligence services. They both protect very jealously their methods of collection of information and analysis, and they both protect very jealously what they do with the information that they have. I think if Mr. Castro is correct that what is actually going on would be acceptable to consumers, then there ought to be no objection to regulation that would require consumers uh, to have the power to get exact information about what is known about them and what is done with what is known. Yes. Sure, I'd like to respond to that. Of course, you know, the, the issue that we're talking about today and the broader issue um, with online tracking and implementing do not track is there's lots of cost involved. So the question is always, is the cost necessary and appropriate? 
Um, I, I do absolutely agree that, you know, broadly speaking, we, we do want government to look out for consumers' privacy rights. One way of doing this is looking specifically at harms, what harms are out there and how can we prevent harms from occurring because it doesn't matter to the consumer how someone got data about them. They care if something bad happens to them. They care if someone's discriminating against them or their information is being used in a harmful way. And so I think that's a very appropriate way that uh, Congress can address uh, these kind of privacy concerns that are out there. Okay, uh, Okay, and uh, the ranking member had to step out, uh, so uh, he, I'll reserve his two minutes and 13 seconds. And uh, that leaves me. I, I do have uh, uh, some questions uh, I'd like to ask. Um, Dr. Moglin, actually, you, you said something during your response to the, uh, one of the questions, I think, asked by uh, Chairman Rush. Um, and while you equated uh, the act of surveillance or uh, tracking to spying, I'm not sure I'd agree with that, but you did say something that I think is really uh, uh, gets to the heart of the matter, and that is who benefits from it. And uh, I've heard testimony today from various people uh, that not only does the advertiser or the, the, the digital company that's engaging in the tracking uh, benefit, but there's some suggestion that consumers benefit as well. Um, specifically, uh, not just in terms of convenience, but um, it allows, for example, low-income uh, consumers easier access because of cheaper costs. Perhaps uh, the argument could be made that it could allow telecommunication companies uh, the flexibility of extending or expanding their networks to serve underserved and unserved areas. And I'm curious, uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Castro uh, whether you have any quantifiable, uh, measurable data that would uh, provide us with details on how a do not tra or, or, or a tracking legislation or an overall blanket uh, prohibition would affect the business mo model within the industry. And then I'm going to ask you, uh, Ms. Grant, the extent to which uh, you're concerned about the economic consequences of of legislative action that might prohibit this kind of activity uh, as it relates to the business model of the telecom companies and their ability then to reach and provide services to, to um, low income and rural or unserved uh, uh, customers. Yeah, so, you know, the, what, you know, would this affect the industry? Uh, you know, certainly when you look at the numbers, there's two numbers you have to look at. One is how much is being spent now and then what the trends are, so how much will be spent in the future. Um, there have been studies on, of course, the effectiveness of online advertising and the impact of regulations. And I point to the study uh, University of Toronto that looked at the impact of Europe, the European Privacy Directive. And that study did find a loss in effectiveness. And what they did as the next step was they said, um, you know, what would that impact be if advertisers changed their spending in direct correlation to the effectiveness of the ad, which is, you know, a very logical thing. So they could either increase their spending, you know, double the number of ads and get the same effectiveness or decrease it in line. So if they decreased it, I think this was applied to the U.S. economy. If it was, if it was decreased, it would be something like a loss of revenue of um, about $5 billion. It was $5 from billion? $5 billion. It was from around, uh, I would have to, I can pull out the number in a minute if you'd like the exact, it was, it was over $5 billion. Who's, whose estimate was that? Uh, this was um, uh, Tucker and Goldfarb uh, from University of Toronto and MIT. Who commissioned the study, or was it an academic? Uh, it was an academic uh, study. Um, Ms. Grant, having heard those numbers, $5 billion is a lot of money, and uh, not just conceivably, but in all probability, might affect uh, the ability of uh, low to middle income consumers to, to obtain access, and again, uh, underserved or unserved consumers to obtain access. What's your response to that, those monetary concerns? Well, first of all, if I understand correctly, this was a study of the EU privacy directive, so I don't think that it's exactly on point. Um, I don't know what the impact of do not track would be on telecom companies. But I would like to say a few things that I think would be helpful here. One is that we're not talking about no advertising. Um, there are 
consumers who might, might not avail themselves of do not track, so would continue to receive tailored advertising. There are consumers who now and in the future will continue to get content contextual advertising, which is based on what they're looking at at the time on the internet and doesn't involve following them around and compiling a dossier of what they do and who they talk to. Um, and and um, consumers um, find information on the internet about the products and services that they want in other ways as well. They do it using search engines. They do it using um, price comparison websites. Um, so there are lots of ways that people find what they're looking for online and uh, behavioral advertising is one part of this but it's certainly not the main or only part um, and I don't think that doing away with it will have a, or, or not doing away with it, but um, giving consumers control over uh, whether they want to be tracked or not will um, create uh, a great economic um, upheaval um, or uh, turn the internet dark overnight. I'm sure that the um, Federal Trade Commission wouldn't be supporting the concept of a do not track uh, mechanism if it felt that it would have that effect either. We're all very concerned about the economy and making sure that um, uh, it's strong and that e-commerce continues to uh, grow, but we don't want to sacrifice consumers' privacy. Uh, we don't let companies do whatever they want just because it's profitable. I'm sure that bombarding consumers with telemarketing calls was probably effective even though a lot of people didn't like it. It made money, but we drew the line. We drew the line in terms of time of day that telemarketers could call consumers, that they couldn't call with an annoying frequency, and then we gave consumers a tool to actually use to reduce unwanted telemarketing if they chose. And that's um, the kind of thing that we're talking about here. Thank you, uh, Ms. Grant. And uh, comment, Mr. Yeah, in one moment, Dr. Moglin, I'm going to call on you uh, to comment. But I, I would like uh, to know from Ms. Gilman uh, whether uh, Time Warner, for example, can quantify uh, and give us some indication as to how this affects your business model uh, and your ability to provide uh, cable services to consumers at current pricing. Um, is there, have you done studies? Is there any measurable data that we can look at? Uh, we have, we've not done a, a study that looked at that, at looked at that specifically, but I can speak to the fact that we need to innovate every day to um, adapt to consumer interests, consumer needs. They look to us to, to make uh, improvements to our service every day. And in this debate being a very important debate, we, the, the risk one runs is that there are unintended consequences of a do not track policy in that it prevents it prevents companies like ours from innovating. Uh, I'd also like to add, though, that the vibrancy of the Internet is extremely important as well. And um, what w should be explored uh, around this debate and discussion is really the unintended consequences for the smaller content providers and service providers, the small businesses in and around this ecosystem. Uh, the, the smaller the website, the smaller the audience, the more, the more challenging uh, times they have selling contextual advertising. Okay, so they do you. not have a large, a large enough audience. So we really want to encourage innovation in the Internet ecosystem, and we want new players entering, and we want to make sure that any discussion around this debate does not prevent that from happening. Okay. Um, Dr. Moglin, you have the last word. Uh, I very much doubt... Uh, Mr. Chairman, that there is any person in this room whose life has not been altered by Wikipedia, which has provided opportunities for underserved populations of the kinds that you were talking about to conduct research and to learn at a level which is otherwise inaccessible to them. Wikipedia is unsupported by advertising, and of the hundred most visited sites on the net studied by the Wall Street Journal in the series previously referred to, it was the only one of the 100 not in any way surveilling or tracking its users. I think, once again, that the attempt to connect the advertising business model to the importance of vibrant content on the net or life-changing possibilities of expansion of access to underserved populations is poppycock. 
Okay, with that, uh, <laughs> uh, do, does uh, uh, the chairman have any additional questions? Mr. Chairman, I, I, in the interest of time, I'm going to uh, just pass because I think that you and the other members of this uh, panel have been here for quite some time. And I was feel as though I was taking advantage of my uh, freshness, my fresh legs, if I would ask another question. So I'm going to pass. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Ranking Member Whitfield? How do you spell poppy? Yeah, how do you spell poppycock? Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll modify my <laughs> remarks to spell it out. Thank All right, you. with that, this uh, hearing uh, is adjourned.